Good evening, folks. Silver here. Today's story reveals the secret incident behind the old chateau in the Sinnoh Pokemon games. What's the secret behind this creepy old place? Let's find out. Also, before we begin, only a small percentage of you that listen to these stories are actually subscribed. So, if you end up enjoying the narration, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. With that, enjoy the story. We have all played Pokemon at least once in our lives, or at the very least heard of it. We all hear how nice the world of Pokemon is, how fun it is, how untrue this is, as there is a terrible truth that resides within a rickety old house deep in a turned forest of the Sinnoh region. The truth of one of the most gruesome incidents in Pokemon history. Cindy Arsenault was a young girl who lived in a mansion owned by her father, Leonidas Arsenault, and their graying butler Chives. Cindy was a sweet young girl, who loved her father very much, but was often very lonely due to her father being busy constantly. All she truly wanted was a friend, and one day, she was granted her wish, when a peculiar Pokemon appeared in front of her as she was watching TV in an upstairs bedroom, the name of which she later discovered was Rotom. Delighted, she played with her new friend daily, discovering Rotom's shape-shifting abilities. Together they would prank Chives, Cindy would have the Pokemon transform into household appliances and shock the butler when he attempted to use them. The butler would laugh warmly as Cindy came running out of hiding shouting, I got you, I got you! It was on the day of Leonidas' wedding anniversary that the incident occurred. Leonidas' wife, Victoria, had died during childbirth and he held a grudge against his daughter, even though it wasn't her fault. She could always feel his cold stares at her turned back, but... She loved him to pieces regardless. This particular day, Leonidas longed for his wife to be at his side. He sat at his long dinner table, downing enough wine to quench the thirst of a room full of governors. Another glass for you, <laughs> Victoria, he would bellow and belch. Chives was upstairs, tucking a blanket over the shoulder of a sleeping Cindy, when he heard the drunken shout of his master from downstairs. Chives, come down at once. Recognizing the drunken wobble of Leonidas' voice, Chives switched the light off in Cindy's room and hurried downstairs. Within the dining room, the butler found the master of the house reduced to a drunken mass of limbs sprawled across the wine-stained dining room table. Chives smiled gently before speaking. Yes, Mr. Arsenault? The man slowly lifted his head, his forehead wrinkled and his cheeks red and sweaty. I'm hungry. Make me a steak. Yes, sir. How would you like your steak cooked? Leonidas groaned, reaching for a glass, knocking over and frowning at the clatter of it hitting the table and spilling its contents over his already soiled pants. He glared up at the butler with glazed eyes. Get out! Chives knew that Leonidas had an unpredictable temper, even when he was sober, and he didn't want to take any chances. Of course, sir. I will be back momentarily with your food. When Chives returned to the dining hall, Leonidas was in even further of a drunken state. He carefully set down the plate of meat in front of the man. I hope you enjoy it, sir. Leonidas slowly placed a piece of meat in his mouth and chewed before spitting it into the poor butler's face. With a shout, he grabbed the plate of the remaining steak and threw it against the wall behind him. The noise of shattering porcelain traveled upstairs and awoke Cindy. She stumbled downstairs, bleary-eyed to find her father shouting at Chives. My fucking steak was supposed to be well done, you fucking idiot! He spat. Dad, what's wrong? Leonidas turned around to see his daughter, staring at him with wide eyes, a smaller version of her mother in every respect. His voice was tight. Go to your room, sweetheart. I'm just talking to Chives. She narrowed her eyes, looking at the state of the dining room, the spilled booze, the smashed plate, the steak juice running down the wall, the steak knife still clutched in her father's shaking hand. Cindy ran to the butler and wrapped her arms around his leg. No, I'm not going to leave. Leonidas looked at her and up to Chives. Go to your room, Cindy. No. His eyes darkened and his voice became louder. He advanced towards her and grabbed her by the wrist. Go to your room, you little bitch! You're hurting me, she cried. 
Leonidas smacked her across the face, and after the initial shock, she began to cry. Looking down at her, his face softened and he began to move closer to her again. But Chives moved in front of his path. Please, do not harm the girl, master. Get the fuck out of my way. He reached into his pocket and summoned his Typhlosion. Typhlosion! Get them out of my way! The beast released a burst of flame from its mouth. Cindy ran and the Pokemon directed its attack towards the sudden movement. With a flash, Cindy's white nightgown was alight. The light cotton acted as quick ammunition as the flames crept up her body. She was screaming. Screaming and batting at her dress and screaming. Leonidas quickly realized what he had done. Running towards his daughter and attempting to put the flames out consuming her body. He grabbed the closest liquid and doused her with it. The fire blazed brighter, and Cindy screamed louder. What on earth do you think you're doing? Chives yelled, shoving the shocked Leonidas to the side. Tearing and ripping at the nightgown, Chives soon found that it was too late. Cindy's screaming had ceased, and her body fell limp in the butler's arms. I is she okay? Leonidas said. Cindy! The little girl's arms were burned black. Her legs, a raw aching red. Her mouth was still wide open, in the picture of agony. Cindy? 24 hours later, the door of Arsenault Chateau was broken down by a group of authorities. The smell of wine, blood and burnt flesh hit their noses. They had been tipped off by a man who could barely speak for his sobbing. Two people are dead in the mansion in the woods near Eterna. Inside the house, they could hear the soft humming of a Pokemon crying. Following the noise, they walked into the dining hall, a wine-soaked table, a chandelier, an orange Pokemon hovering over a spot on the floor, humming quietly as it stared down at something. On the floor lay a girl, burnt black and red from her legs to her neck, almost in the shape of a dress. Her eyes were closed, as was her mouth. There were tears streaked down her face. Three feet away lay an elderly man, a steak knife lodged in his throat. He was dressed in a typical butler's attire. To this day, no one has inhabited the old chateau, except for Pokemon. Rumors say that Cindy and Chive still lurk through the rooms of the chateau, lost, looking for a way out. It's said that Rotom still plays with Cindy by turning into the television to prank Chives. I got you! I got you!